Moms and dads, I bet you can relate to this email. Kirk, my son is just like the kids you described in your podcast. He comes home feeling defeated after school, feeling like he isn't smart. But I got him Crunch Labs, and he loves it. Building the new toy and watching Mark Rober makes him feel smart. And then he explains, talking a million miles a minute, like our kids do, all the cool science facts he's learned. It's like I get my real kid back when he's building his Crunch Labs toy. And that is exactly why I was so psyched when my niece first told me how her son loves Crunch Lab. Confession, this is the one sponsor I wanted more than any other because it's such a perfect fit for our kids. So go to crunchlabs.com slash calm and you'll see why. Crunch Labs is a STEM monthly subscription build box for kids. Your kids get a really fun toy in the mail every month. And what kid doesn't love that? And then they put it together by watching a step-by-step video from former NASA engineer Mark Rober, where he teaches all the cool physics that make the toy work. Mark's passion is helping kids think like engineers. And this helps your kids develop resilience and problem-solving skills while having a ton of fun. Get your kids something they will actually love, use, and look forward to getting all throughout the coming year. Build your child's confidence now. Visit crunchlabs.com slash calm and get your kids Crunch Labs today. When you bring your child home for the first time, you want a baby monitor you can trust. When you choose Stork, you choose technology trusted to monitor 10 million babies in hospitals every year. Stork continuously tracks your baby's pulse rate, oxygen saturation, and temperature. Visit MassimoStork.com to learn more. Stork, a revolutionary baby monitor, is born. Stork is not a medical device. Read and understand all product labeling. Massimo data on file. So are you tired of the daily power struggles and fights over homework, right? The homework can trigger meltdowns, lectures, tears, and it's just miserable, right? I know some of your kids have real attention issues, right? Many of your kids want to give up when work gets difficult. Some of your kids are just bored. Some of them are exhausted after holding it together all day at school. So instead of just harping on kids for being lazy or not applying themselves, what I want to give you are some tools to improve focus, to improve the brain processing, to make homework time easier and less stressful, right? Now, we can't cover everything, but I'm going to give you some tools. I'm going to talk fast. I'm going to try to fit a lot of this stuff in. So that's what we're going to talk about on today's episode of the Calm Parenting Podcast. So welcome. This is Kirk Martin, founder of Celebrate Calm. You can find us at CelebrateCalm.com. If you need help, reach out to our son, Casey. He was a very strong-willed kid who hated homework. So we fought with him over this for years until we finally, finally had the breakthrough that things only changed, homework, schoolwork changed, when we finally figured out how his brain works best rather than trying to impose our way on him. See, some of you are type A. Right? You've got very linear, neurotypical brains, so you assume everybody learns and works best like you do. And that's a natural assumption. It's just not true. right? And so you've got to figure out how do their brains work. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. And once you do that, then you can do sometimes some weird things, some odd things, but that really help your kids make that connection in their brain. So if you need help, reach out to Casey. He gets this. It's C-A-S-E-Y at CelebrateCalm.com. Tell us about your kids, your family, what are the ages of kids? What are you struggling with? We get together as a family. We talk about it. We will reply back to you personally because this is a personal mission and we're here to help. So this podcast is becoming is coming from a, a mom who, who emailed us and told us this story. She said, okay, she's got a strong-willed child. He's about 11 doing his schoolwork. He's on the computer and he happens to see an audio file on the computer and he opens it. And what it is, it's me. They have the Calm Parenting Package and ADHD University and all of our programs on their computer. You can get it on the app. And so we sent her the, the app so she get all the programs on the app. But he clicked on it, right? And so he starts listening to me teach about all these different things. Now, he has to write an essay which is really hard for him, as it is for most of your kids, right? Getting their thoughts from head 
down on the paper is really hard. Your kids will crumple up their paper and throw it down. This is stupid. They can talk to you about their great ideas, but as soon as you ask them to write it down, it's really, really hard. So what do kids do? They procrastinate. They complain. Some of your kids even have a meltdown, right? Most of your kids will give up when work gets challenging. So this kid is now learn, listening to our programs, and he's listening to me talk about how to jumpstart his brain and push through things that are difficult, using movement, music, momentum, managing your energy, not your time. These are huge insights that will help your kids. So his parents notice him doing weird things. He's like sprinting around the outside of the house. He's sitting on an exercise ball. His parents never use it anymore, right? He's lying upside down off the sofa, spinning. He's listening to music, using his pencil as a drumstick. He's chewing gum. He's scribbling notes furiously, and it's messy because it's a really big key for your kids to let them do that. And so they ask their son, what are you doing? And so he said, well, this calm guy that you listened to said there's nothing wrong with my brain that I actually have advantages because I can hyper-focus when I'm interested, that I just need to jumpstart my brain. Why didn't you guys tell me this when I was younger? Now, that's a typical strong-willed child thing, right? Like, why didn't you teach me this? But it is true. We fail to teach our kids the way their brains work best. It's the brain they're going to have through college, through all their work career for the rest of their lives. So, his parents' mouths are hanging open, right? They're about to get on this kid about looking at private things on the computer. And then the kid, their child comes up with this. Oh, yeah. And he said, you need to apologize for misjudging my motives and lecturing me so much. Right? You know this kind of kid. He's got the smart mouth, but the huge heart, right? The kid who will give all of his stuff to a homeless person, but he'll turn around and say awful things to you. Right? And so now he tells his parents, because this is a funny story. He says, look, mom, dad, I'm sorry for not listening and I'm sorry for arguing so much. I know I push your buttons. And they begin to smile, but you know how this ends with a strong-willed child. He said, well, I only push your buttons because you have so many buttons to push. Not my words. That's what that calm guy said. So all fun aside, you must jumpstart your child's brain so he or she can push through difficult assignments like writing. And by the way, you do need to apologize for micromanaging your kids, and they may just reciprocate when you lead with humility. So, giving kids tools to succeed with homework time. I want you to observe your child. How do your kids learn best? Watch them around the house. Where do they like to sit? How do they sit? Do they sit uh, on, their, on their heels? Um, do your kids like to hide? How do they relax best, right? Where are they when they do that? Right? Do they like rocking back on that kitchen chair that annoys you so much? Well, that probably says they have a sensory need because that feels really good. The pressure on their back feels good, and they have to balance on the chair so they don't tip backwards. What is that? That's brain stimulation, right? You can use that. Right? If you have a child who hangs upside down off the sofa, use that because you can walk in and say, hey, bet you can't do your math worksheet upside down. Better yet, go lie down next to them upside down. You will connect with them, see the world from their point of view, and probably get the work done more quickly and have a better conversation. Right? Do you have a child who comes home from school and maybe hides under things, likes confined spaces? Perfect. So banish the homework table of death. That's what we call the kitchen table where spirits are crushed as we stand over as parents saying, you know, if you would just focus, you'd be done in 30 minutes instead of it taking three hours, right? Because that kills a kid's spirit, right? So instead, throw a blanket over the table. Now you just created a fort. Kids love forts. Let them do their schoolwork under the table. Now it's dark under there, so they need light. So hand them a flashlight. Why? Flashlights are fun. They're interesting. Or hand them some matches. That'll stimulate your brain. And by the way, they can eat the mac and cheese and chicken nuggets that fell off their plate from the night before. Mix it up. Do it differently. By the way, many of your kids are slower processors of information. It's how their brain works because they're also deeper processors of information, which also leads to them having trouble sleeping at times because it takes them a while to, to, to process everything. So I really want you to normalize that, that there's nothing wrong with doing work more slowly, right? Especially type A parents out there. Right? Let's get this done. Get this done. It's not the way their brain works. And you don't want to change their brain. 
You want to accentuate. You want to use their brain the way it's supposed to work. Otherwise, they will begin to interpret, internalize, well, I'm stupid. I'm slow, so I must be stupid. Not true at all, right? So much of this is just mindset. Many of you have kids who already feel like they're behind or they're stupid, right? They don't compare well to their siblings. So I want you to build their confidence, create successes, getting them use, get them using their natural gifts and passions as much as possible. Encourage their curiosity. Discover what your kids are curious about, right? So I, I bet about a third of the phone consultations that I do with parents are, are parents of teenagers who ask this, how do I motivate my child? Whether he's 11 or 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, doesn't matter. How do I motivate my teenager to care about school? Well, it's not by lecturing them, right? They already know that they're supposed to care about school. You have to discover what they care about first and then link that to how school actually helps them get what they want. TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. Right? When you get them doing a mission, right? A larger mission using their gifts, talents, and passions. Working with another adult because other adults can see great things inside your kids. They can hold your kids accountable in ways that you can't. And you already know this. Your kids are usually amazing for other people and horrible for you. So I use the mission and mentor approach to discover, right, that they have a natural gifting to be an architect, a veterinarian, IT person, a teacher, a psychologist, to help other kids, right? See, once they get a vision for how they can use their particular gifts and passions, now they have a reason to do schoolwork, not because mommy and daddy or teacher wants them to do it, because it means something to them. It's a means to an end, right? Many of you are like, well, you should just do your schoolwork because it's, it's good to do schoolwork and feel good about it. Look, I, they're very practical kids, right? So just tell them, okay? Like, hey, I, look, it, just get the degree. Do the work so that you can do the work that you love later, right? So here are some other tools. That's a really important one to find what they care about. Movement critical. Let's work movement into the learning process because movement creates rhythm. Sitting on the exercise ball. Let your kids stand at the kitchen counter while they're listening to music. Experiment with intense music while they're eating a snack because the chewing, the rocking back and forth, the listening to music all create rhythm, which creates rhythm in their brain and helps them process better. Right? And so instead of like, let's have a snack and then do schoolwork, no, let them eat a snack while they're doing it, chewing gum, fidgeting. It's all good for them. Review vocabulary words, math facts, flashcards, all that stuff, even deeper concepts, right? Even deeper concepts, not while you're sitting down, standing over them or sitting down, quizzing them, but do it while you're playing catch, kicking a soccer ball, right? Doing a hula hoop, right? Going for a walk, swinging. We did a lot of schoolwork. We taught kids how to read while they were swinging on a swing because they had to work hard to hold themselves up and all that brain stimulation made it interesting. Jumping rope, right? If you've got a child who loves to spin because they have a vestibular need, spin with them and quiz them. And I guarantee they'll remember their vocabulary words while, they'll spin, while they're spinning. It's just going to irritate you. Right? I talked about music. Develop music playlists for doing work. Right? Movement and music are about creating rhythm to counter the lack of order in the brain. As I was working through some of this, you know what I was doing? I was listening to a live concert. Why live concert of this band? Because there's more energy to a live concert. And it's, and it, and it's stimulating my brain and actually helped me concentrate better. So experiment with it, right? Create that obstacle course in the basement or the backyard so your sensory kids have to climb, crawl, slither, under and over things. Create a climbing wall or things for them to pull, pu uh, push, 
shoveling mulch, doing yard work can be helpful, right? Doing schoolwork after intense exercise, really helpful because the brain is stimulated, endorphins are released, they're a little bit more relaxed. It focuses them. Casey used to get schoolwork done after he got off the ice. He played ice hockey. It's a very intense physical sport. So now he gets off, his face is all red, he's got the endorphins, right? He's eating and he's doing his schoolwork then. A lot, here's a weird idea. A lot of your kids will do their schoolwork better at a place that they enjoy going to, right? Gymnastics, the gym, at the dance class, martial arts place, at hockey practice. We did a lot of schoolwork at the hockey rink, right? With, with some of his friends. I did it in public. Do it in the car while you're driving. I have kids who think best when they're sitting in the car. So you pick your kids up from school, you bring them home, you get out of the SUV, they stay in the car listening to music. It's like their own little office. I have kids who do better schoolwork out in the dirt. Seriously, play with this, experiment with it. Remember to manage your child's energy, not their time. This is a huge insight. I don't have time to do it on this podcast. Huge insight. When you listen to the Calm Parenting program, you will find this out. You don't manage time. That's a neurotypical way of of thinking. I manage my time. Casey manages time. We, We Not our time. We manage our energy. We work in momentum, in spurts. We get a lot done. We hyper focus in a short amount of time. And so we divide our days up into how our energy works. It is so much more effective. So giving breaks after school, doing work, work in small spurts right? Followed by a break of some kind, just not on screens because they can't come back from that, right? Do the work after exercise. Do so, I have kids who do work best when they wake up in the morning. So they wake up, mom or dad's doing breakfast and they come down, they do their work then. I have kids, older kids who often do their schoolwork best, homework, after 10 o'clock at night. I know it's going to irritate you because they're procrastinating, but you know what part of it is? It's because everybody's in bed. The world slows down. Nobody's up lecturing them and they can think better then. It's just the way that it works, right? So go with that flow of their energy. Do math with sidewalk chalk. I know kids who do homework sitting up in a tree or a fort or sitting in a closet or hiding in the bushes. It's stimulating, it's weird, it's peaceful. And their parents can't look over their shoulders. Right? You give context. Context is super important for strong-willed kids. You can teach percentages and algebra by calculating the percentage increase in the number of Instagram followers they have to match someone famous. Right, When I volunteered at the inner city community school during COVID, I would do real-world math problems. Hey, you get your first NBA contract. X percent goes to your agent, to taxes. How much do you have left over after you pay all those things? When I made it a story stories are interesting. You remember stories. Stories and context are great teaching tools. Look, I, I, I know kids who do a lot of work outside sit on a porch swing on a rocking chair so they can push off with their foot while they're reading. It can make a difference. Plus, they're in fresh air with birds chirping. Even if there's snow on the ground, some of your kids will go outside, shovel some snow, or make themselves their own little igloo where they can do school. Do it by stream. Do it on swings. Take a picnic outside. Just mix it up. Give you a couple more. Give your kids balls they can squeeze or toss in the air while studying. When I worked in the corporate world, especially at this one job I had that I hated, Everybody knew when I was deep in thought because they would see a little yellow football flying up in the air above my cubicle. The process of throwing that ball up in the air, giving it some spin, and then catching it when it came down, it helped me process information and think better. So mix that up. Olfactory stimulation. There's a lot of research on this. If your child has a favorite scent, right, a candle, dad's cologne, Casey used to like the smell of my shaving cream, put a little bit under their nose. Then they can smell it all through the school day, right? It's weird, but it'll work for some of your kids. Light a candle with a great scent. Some kids do better homework while they're smelling dinner being made, right? Look, part of the reason we go to coffee shops or Panera Bread isn't just the caffeine in the coffee. It is the smells that stimulate our olfactory senses that help us concentrate. Remember to prime your kids for success, right? Yelling and telling them they're lazy, that they're not applying themselves. It just doesn't work. So control your own anxiety 
and I bet we can make homework less of a power struggle. So what are you going to do differently tomorrow? What are you going to do this afternoon, tomorrow afternoon at homework time? Try some of these ideas. If you need help with this, I encourage you to go through the Calm Parenting Program or the Get Everything Program because we detail this. There are so many insights in how, into how your child's brain works that help in everyday life, getting chores done, right? Reducing those power struggles and these things you can share with your child's teacher. You get the programs on an app and we'll give the teacher access to this app so they can listen to this so it can help them in, in the classroom. And we can stop a lot of these power struggles and help your child feel capable and confident. And that's what we're after. Hey, thank you for being a great parent. Thanks for putting so much work into this. Thank you for sharing this podcast. If we can help you in any way, reach out to KCCASEY at CelebrateCalm.com and let us know how we can help. If you ever need help with our stuff financially, don't be afraid or ashamed. Email us and tell us that and we will help you because we live to do this. All right. Love you all. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.